We've got another one from Hollyland today. It's the Lark 150 clip-on wireless microphone system. It's tiny and we're taking a first look. Thanks to Hollyland for sending in the Lark 150 for us to check out on the channel. I really appreciate all of the companies who are interested in honest feedback and input from the community here. Links are in the description below. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to pass them along and get you an answer. So what are we looking at here? This is a 2.4 gigahertz, two channel wireless microphone system using adaptive frequency hopping or AFH technology to communicate wirelessly. These units automatically sync to each other when you remove them from the case and use FHSS or frequency hopping spread spectrum transmission to stay connected without any interference. Sounds impressive. I've linked some papers below on both AFH and FHSS for anyone interested in getting into more details with those two technologies. The accessories for the system include a soft carrying pouch and a pair of omnidirectional lavalier microphones. You also get additional foam windscreens and a nice pair of larger furry wind covers that fit onto the microphones that are built into the transmitters themselves. They've included a 3.5 millimeter TRS to TRS cable for patching the receiver to your camera or to a small recorder. And they've also included a 3.5 millimeter TRS to TRRS cable for using with cell phones or mobile devices. There is a USB A to C cable included also for charging and performing firmware updates through the case. The receiver features both line outputs for connecting to cameras and a headphone out, which for a small camera like my Sony a6500 is a huge upgrade, being able to monitor with headphones as you're shooting. The case itself serves as both a dock and a charging station for the transmitters and receiver and includes its own battery for recharging the system on the go. The whole system is absolutely incredibly small, even compared with other small or portable options on the market at much higher prices. You're looking at adding just 434 grams to your setup if you carry everything that comes with this kit. The charging case measures only 12 by 6 by 5 and the accessory pouch will fit all of the other accessories just about anywhere in your bag. For anyone working on their own, vlogging, or just needing to travel really late, this is a pretty attractive system at the current street price of $329 at the time of filming. If it works as good as it looks coming out of the box, I think a lot of folks are going to be into it. I mentioned a moment ago that the transmitters have microphones built in, and those are omnidirectional microphones just like the included labs. So if you don't have time to wire somebody up for whatever reason, but you want to get some audio that's better than what's going to come off the camera at whatever distance that happens to be, you can just simply clip this onto them somewhere, a pocket between the, the buttons, and you've got a microphone there again with that windscreen that they've provided, and you'll at least get some better audio than what you would have gotten with the camera audio. This is a test just to compare the lab we were listening to a moment ago to just the built-in microphone in the transmitter. This is clipped kind of high up though. So this is a test about the same distance, the transmitter versus the lab we've been listening to so far in the video. The receiver also comes with a nice clip that's sized to fit into hot or cold shoe mounts and it fits really nicely on top of a mirrorless camera. The specs say you should get around four hours of runtime with the transmitters and around seven and a half hours out of that receiver. I believe the case is supposed to give you two and a half recharges for the whole system uh, before it needs to be recharged, but we'll test all that in detail for sure in the next couple weeks. Latency is reported at just five milliseconds, which is quite reasonable for any system. As long as it's consistent between the two transmitters, each time you turn it on, you'll have no issues syncing that up in editing. Many pro wireless systems that cost quite a bit more uh, are typically in the two to five millisecond range themselves. So we're right in that same ballpark. Coverage is spec to be good up to a hundred meters. And I'd suspect that needs to be line of sight uh, to actually get that kind of distance properly. Physical obstructions will absolutely knock down 2.4 gigahertz transmissions in real world situations. Anybody that's got Wi-Fi at home can attest to that. 
so your mileage will definitely vary depending on what other radio equipment you have on site where you're shooting, what kind of traffic's in the air around you, and what your physical environment looks like. You'll definitely have different results. I wouldn't expect to go 100 meters inside of a crowded building. So let's get into the functionality of the actual units here. The Lark has three modes that we can select from that provide some pretty cool features. We switch mode simply by pressing and holding the left mute button on the receiver. I'll point out here that you can also mute the units from both ends. There's a mute button on the transmitters and the receiver for each channel. So that's a really nice feature. So when we press and hold that mute button on the receiver though, first we go into mono mode. In this mode, both transmitters are summed to mono and sent out of both of the outputs. It doesn't matter if you're using one transmitter or two in the mono mode, you get the same uh, output on both of those uh, channels coming out of the receiver. And if you're using both, it'll just sum them together. The next mode is the one I'm using right now, and that's safety track mode, which I really like. When you're using a single transmitter, you get two discrete tracks. You get the track that is at the volume you set it at, and then another track that's 6 dB below that, which is really handy for, again, vloggers or anybody uh, shooting anything where there's unpredictable background noise or unpredictable talent who might clip the microphone at some point, and you want to have a track just a little bit below that as a safety in case that happens happens. If you're using both of the microphones in this mode, it will again sum to mono uh, and you'll still get that mono track on one and then 6 dB lower on the second output. And then the final mode is stereo mode, which is just like it sounds. You get two discrete tracks, so you can do a stereo left-right recording, or if you have two people on camera, a microphone for each of them, and then they each get their discrete dialogue track when you pull it into your editor. That's a good bit of flexibility, and I really like that safety track feature. Uh, again, for vloggers or anybody that's just recording in the real world, it's always a good idea if you have the capability in your equipment is to record that second track as a safety. You can go six or more dB below your primary track as a safety, depending on the situation, but six is a good start for sure. The marketing materials say there is a noise canceling DSP at work in these units, and I haven't noticed any unusual behavior or artifacts from that DSP so far. We'll do some more testing in the next little bit with some uh, playing different signals through these and putting them in different environments uh, to see if we can hear that or uh, understand a little bit more about how that DSP is working, but so far so good on first impressions. Now I've seen questions already online in other videos asking if you can use different microphones with these units, and you definitely can, but you gotta be aware of what you're doing first. So for professional microphones, like what you get from Countryman, DPA, Sankin, Tram, anybody else out there making you know, professional dialogue type lavalier headset microphones, all of those microphones are gonna be looking for either 48 volt phantom power, some variation of that, or a bias voltage. And that'll typically be closer to five volts but it will be very specific whether or not it's a positive or negative voltage, depending on the microphone you have. These are closer to what you get out of something like a Tascam field recorder where they have mic power. Same thing on a lot of cameras. And that's gonna be less than five volts. In the Tascam's case, it's around two and change. And these metered, I was getting 1.6 volts out of these. And that's plenty to power a less expensive electric microphone that only needs a little bit of power to get it working. So you can definitely find other elements for these different microphones. You could adapt this out to a dynamic microphone for a ENG style interview, a stand up type deal, or you can choose some of these microphones like I've got here from eBay that are super cheap, just headset microphones. This is like a Countryman knockoff, but uh, again, works on that lower voltage. This one's terminated tip sleeve. This one, tip ring sleeve. Both of them work just fine. These are kind of awful sounding microphones, but it does in fact work with these transmitters. So the only thing that I found so far that's kind of letting this system down, honestly, is these lavalier microphones. And I'll demonstrate that here. I was prepping this one uh, with a Rycote sticky and an overcover. And right now you can see that I've just got this one uh, just haphazardly clipped in the middle of my shirt to kind of give it the best case scenario. No clothes, no layers over top of it. But this is typically something I would use and you could use this over top or under, again, moleskin or 
dry coat over or under cover. These are fantastic. But while I was prepping this, uh, we'll do a double demonstration. I'm gonna open the other transmitter and it'll connect automatically. And then we'll be able to hear this microphone and mine all on the same track. So this is gonna sync itself now automatically. Let's see, plug it in actually. There we go. So now we've got both microphones and this probably sounds a little bit ridiculous, but the strain relief on these lavalier microphones, see if we can get, there we go, get that to focus a little bit. Now, Okay, now we're back to just one microphone. So this one doesn't do that, but there is a little bit of handling noise uh, in these microphones. Now, obviously I don't have this cable dressed whatsoever to uh, eliminate that. And you would definitely wanna do that with any microphone, but that's the only thing I've seen so far in this system that kind of has jumped out at me as not being uh, great is the strain relief on these lavaliers. These are generally, I'll open this guy. These are generally speaking, just not the most high quality labs you're gonna come across. And as such, that cable really is letting this system down. This one here, uh, if I was to have recorded this whole thing with this and uh, not been monitoring it, uh, that definitely could have ruined a take. And I would say that this microphone is not really up to scratch considering I've only used it uh, once so far in the last two days that I've had this system. I think that might just be a manufacturing defect because this other one doesn't do it. Now I can open this up and drop a little bit of glue into there and that'll solve that problem. It's literally just come undone. There may have been a bit of glue holding that together before, but uh, definitely keep an eye out on that when you're using any sort of inexpensive uh, lavalier mic, especially anything you're putting on the talent and then letting them go and perform with, you've got to make sure that you've got all that kind of stuff locked down or you're going to drive everybody crazy. Uh, if you notice it, you're going to drive people crazy fixing it all the time. And if you don't notice it, you're going to ruin a lot of takes that you're going to hear later just aren't really usable. Uh, so, that's the only thing, and I'm gonna dig into the system more and use it more over the next couple of weeks, and I'll report back with uh, any other things that I come across and how it all works. Let me know if you've got any questions. Thanks again to Hollyland for sending this one over. It's a really neat little system. It's so compact. It's hard to imagine that they've got so much going on in such a little uh, unit, and then they've also made it rechargeable, like just really cool stuff. So for the price, uh, really interesting to see where they're going with this. So that's it for the Lark 150. I'm gonna use this one a whole bunch more and see what else I come across and how else it works in different situations. We'll take it outside once all this snow clears up and give it some uh, distance and range tests with both units and see exactly what it does. But let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. My lights run out and that's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.